Hey everyone, this is Chris, friendly neighborhood Minnesota comic geek here with a recap and haul video from this weekend's last Minnesota comic exchange Valley Creek Mall show. Uh, before I get started though, I would ask that if you enjoy this type of comic book related content, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And if you enjoy talking comics, then comment below. All right let's get into it so this this last saturday yesterday when i'm recording this video uh the minnesota comic exchange here in minnesota uh, put on their third and i believe final valley creek mall show of the year uh it's held over in woodbury minnesota for those of you that don't know or that couldn't attend um it's in a little strip mall uh, type uh, setup where the vendors just kind of line the, the walkway, hallway areas. There was maybe uh, 20, 15 to 20 like comic dealers with just each, each dealer had maybe um, two, two to three um, of those kind of fold out uh, long tables. Uh, so I, I kind of overheard a lot of the, a couple of the dealers saying that they, they just brought a, a select, a very specific selection of their, their inventory for this particular show, just because they don't have the, the real estate to bring a larger selection that will happen at Falcon in a couple weeks. Um, but I always enjoy going to, uh, this little comic show just cause you're going to find some pretty good deals. Um, case in point, uh, I ended up buying 74 total books for a total of $90, which uh, the cost basis for that would be about $1.22 per book of every book I'm going to be showing in this video. If you take out the one kind of bigger purchase, I bought one comic for $20, and I'll let you know when I get to it. Uh, but if you take that book out, then that lowers the, the price per book to about $0.95 cents per book. So I, I definitely went the, the dollar bin route this time just because I wasn't, I wasn't finding or seeing some of the higher-priced or, like, medium-priced books that I was looking for was willing to purchase at this time. There was, there were two, two high price books that on a different day, I would have pulled the trigger. I wasn't prepared mentally, I guess, to pull the trigger on these two books. And the first one was a graded copy of Silver Surfer number one at a 5.5 for I believe it was for $550, $550, which is, judging by eBay prices and listings, is a very good price for that that graded level of that book. Uh, it's a book that is on my short list of kind of grail books that I would love to own at some point in my life. Um, but again, I wasn't <laughs> wasn't prepared to purchase that today or yesterday. The other book was slightly cheaper. It is it was the J. Scott Campbell X Men number one Rogue negative space cover. If you don't know that one, I'll put up an image on the screen. This is another book uh, specific to J. Scott Campbell that I would love to own. I absolutely love this cover. The the use of negative space with Rogue's costume and her pose, like, is such a beautiful and wonderfully designed cover. It is one of Campbell's more iconic covers in my mind that I just, it's, it's a book that I would love to own. Uh, he had it for $200 and based on, again, eBay pricing, 
that's a pretty good deal because I think listings go for three or four hundred dollars on on that book. So again, I wasn't prepared to pull the trigger on just getting one book at that price. So I'm thinking if he has it available at Falcon, I am definitely going to pull the trigger then. Um, so we'll see. But getting into the video, these are in no particular order. I'm going to save kind of my favorite purchases uh, that I acquired for the end of the video. So if you want to skip the run filler stuff, you can skip towards the end. But I started off, I ended up getting a lot of uh, new the New Mutants Volume 1 run filler issues that I needed. You know, I got issue 41, 44, 45, which is the... The only key book in this stack where it's the iconic Barry Winter Smith cover with the anniversary border, but in this book, uh, in the on the last page, Kitty Pride is giving a, a speech at a memorial service or something, and she uses uh, several racial slurs. I won't repeat them, but if you want to find out what she says, pick up this book. I got it for a dollar, actually. These were all one dollar purchases on these New Mutants books. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, issue 46, 47, 51, 52, 62, 72, and 75. A excellent John Byrne cover. Uh, but again, these were all just kind of run filler issues that I needed to kind of still work in to complete my New Mutants run. Next up at the Granite City uh, dollar bins, uh, I ended up just randomly finding a bunch of the Adam Hughes X-Men Classic issues and they're all newsstand variants and again these were all dollar I got issue 71 and 72, which after getting these two, the only Adam Hughes X-Men Classic cover that I need is issue 79, which is the Dark Phoenix cover. And that's the, the harder one to acquire. Um, got issue 73 and 78. These are all in excellent condition as well. And I came across another copy of number 83 with the Joe Matarera early cover. This stack here uh, were Michael Turner specific covers that I might own one or two, but I'm pretty sure I don't own most of these. Uh, Wishblade issue 50, definitely don't own this this copy. And then I he had a bunch of the uh, the new Fantastic Four uh, Michael Turner covers that he did um, issue 544. 545 this one was used a lot when it was came out and prior to with the the silver surfer issue 547 548 549 550 again another uh fantastic four image that, of his that was used a lot and issue 553 and at a, a different dealer's booth had um, a almost a full run of the all-new X-Men run by Brian Michael Bendis and Stuart Immonen. And the orange sticker indicates that these books were 50 cents a piece in in his bins. So I this is a run of X-Men that I absolutely love and feel it is drastically underrated um in terms of the story and specifically the art Stuart Immonen at this point in his career went into a different stratosphere with his style and the master level anatomy structure everything about uh the character designs and everything themselves on top of the, his mastery of storytelling and pacing in the books 
is something to behold and like i said is so underrated these books you will like outside of maybe one or two and i don't even know which ones those are um you can find out like maybe issue one um and you notice i starting with issue two here because they didn't have issue one outside of issue one these books like the entire run does not go for more than a buck or two you can find this whole run in the one dollar bins there like i said there's no real key significance to virtually any of the books like there's they're just it's just a solid story if you don't have a problem with um time travel premises uh for those that don't know the series kicks off with the older beast going back in time and bringing the original x-men the original five to the future to confront their older selves specifically the younger cyclops to confront the older cyclops because this this takes place after the events of um avengers uh versus the x-men where Cyclops, Emma Frost, Magic, Colossus, Namor all get a portion of the Phoenix power and kind of lay waste to the Earth and create all kinds of havoc. And Cyclops kills Professor X. And it's like, so Cyclops is in a bad way and like going down a, a dangerous path. And Beast wants to uh, remind him of you know what he his values and morals were at one point so anyways that's kind of how the whole series kicks off and so it's it's an interesting tale of how the younger versions are coming to terms with where the future state of the x-men are in terms of uh you know what they believe in what they're fighting for like how things have changed since their like younger years like bendis does a, a wonderful job like crafting this this story and the the various story arcs throughout the issues and the the series um you know one of the fantastic parts about imminence um re-envisioning of what happens to cyclops's powers is like they do they have this new visual like it's not just a straight beam like it's just chaotic and unpredictable optic blasts and like he can't control it so it's it's just uh, a wonderful new in interpretation albeit limited for a time on what happened to them after having the the phoenix powers and Getting to Eminem's artwork, one of his um, kind of visual um, presentations that he does often in in the pages of the books are kind of these collage um, events within a character's life. Um, and he there's a couple um, that involve Jean Grey, Phoenix, Marvel Girl. Girl. It's from a artist design standpoint it's it's one thing it's it's wonderful to like just study it and just you know appreciate the the design aspect of laying out the the figures the the detail and everything so definitely uh just a sight to behold when you're you're reading it the the art just brings um the story to life in such a a vibrant way um so yeah and this is uh issue 12 here this has a beautiful moment it's beautiful because at this when at the point of the young x-men's the original fives timeline cyclops thought his brother uh havoc uh was dead he didn't know at that point that he was alive um and so obviously in the we know he's he didn't die like he's alive he gets to meet the older version of his brother and they have a very touching moment together 
um, in the in the pages of this book. So it's a again wonderful story there. Uh, just the things that they can do with the interactions of the younger versions and the the older versions of characters that they would meet throughout their history. Another kind of mini event throughout the the series was the Battle of the Atom. Uh, again, just where future versions of characters come back to the past to try and, you know, kill off certain other characters. Just, again, great, great story. Um, then the other fantastic mini arc in the series was this trial of Jean Grey. Um, so the younger, the younger version of Jean Grey gets put on trial by the Shi'ar Empire for the future crimes that she would commit as Dark Phoenix when she destroys that planet and everything. Like, so they, they put the younger version of her on trial for her future crimes, a la Minority Report. <laughs> you get you get this um, uh, excellent story where she trying to, def she's defending herself. The, again, this is, these issues of the trial part, you get just fantastic imminent art where he, the, the detail on the power visuals of the various characters, the energy projections, it, like coupled with his, again, his design and storytelling uh, skills are on full display in these couple of issues. They're they're just amazing works of art. Um, then you get uh, ended up getting the up to issue twenty nine here. Um, so yeah, I again I would just highly recommend picking up this run of all new X Men through like issue maybe thirty five to forty. Again, you can get them in the dollar bins, and they're they are just a, a worthwhile purchase in my opinion. All right, so these are going to be just kind of random uh, purchases that I just came across. Some are duplicates that I have, some are for better condition, some are things I didn't have. Uh, I got Uncanny X Men 151 for 50 cents. Uh, I got this issue of X Men One with the the Storm Jean Grey Team Gold cover um, for two bucks because I didn't, I don't know if I have a good copy, but finding any X Men 1 copy now for less than 10 to $15, pick it up because they're just uh, going up in price regardless of the millions of copies that exist. <laughs> Uh, I got issue number three. I just love the the first three issues of the this Jim Lee X Men run. Got X Men number ten. Uh, again, just trying to find a better copy than condition copy that I have. I think this is X Men issue forty five. It's the this Adam Kubert or not Adam Andy Kubert cover. That's a gate fold out. Um, I just love this cover. Uh, I always kind of pick it up when I come across it for super cheap. Uh, Sabretooth number four with the Mark Tessera cover. I know I have issues one and two. Uh, I don't remember if I had issue four, so I picked it up because it was cheap. Uh, X-Men X -Man number one, just getting a, another excellent condition copy. X-Factor 89 and 90. These are... Joe Quesada X Factor run issues, specific, especially 90, I always pick up when they're in excellent condition and for a buck. Like, always going to pick those up. Uh, the Savage Wolverine number six and seven, the Joe Matarera two of the three issue run. Just uh, fantastic Joe Matarera <laughs> comics. Uh, Avengers Disassembled number 500, again. I always kind of pick this one up when I come across it for super cheap. Guardians of the Galaxy number six, the issue after Angela's first uh, full appearance uh, in the Marvel Universe in Guardians of the Galaxy issue five. Uh, so this isn't the key issue, but it's a excellent uh, Sarah Pichelli, uh Angela cover.
Thor number six, the Donny Cates, Nick Klein, Black Winter storyline issue. <laughs> I, <laughs> Detective Comics number 666, the Mark of the Beast issue, just, uh, this is, this is a nostalgic childhood pickup from the, the Nightfall run. And then I got Gen 13 issues 13A and 13B. Uh, for those that you don't know, it's a J. Scott Campbell run of Gen 13 comics, where it, issue 13 was broken down into three separate issues that are like 10 to 12 pages each, um, where the Gen 13 group kind of traverse the comic multiverse and visit many different characters throughout comics not just image comics um but like bone and everything so it's a fun fun little tale and campbell's art always fantastic all right this is my stack of the favorite pickups that i acquired uh yesterday came across a 50 cent copy of the Gen 13 Ordinary Heroes number one, featuring Adam Hughes, both cover and interior art. Uh, again, this is a, an underrated Adam Hughes comic book that you can find for super cheap in virtually any comic book dealer's um, dollar bins. So uh, if you're an Adam Hughes fan, definitely pick it up. It's uh, just a two issue miniseries. Uh, again, another Adam Hughes art pickup, Justice League America number 45. Uh, it was super cheap, came across it. Um, yeah, features interior artwork by Adam Hughes. It's very early Adam Hughes artwork. Uh, Weapon Zero T-4. This is an all-time favorite of mine from the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it is a top cow uh, imprint series with artwork by Joe Benitez. You might know him from his Lady Mechanica uh, creator-owned series that he's done over the last decade or so. Um, but this is kind of where he more or less got his start um, doing regular comic book uh, pencils. The sheer level of detail in all of the armor and guns and air, like his so mind-blowingly staggeringly like just so so insane uh as an artist like knowing just how long all of this detail takes to draw i can understand why the issues took so long to come out like over the the run of issue like series if you are an artist yourself and you want to draw like armor uh, on characters or you want to draw weapons or mechanical suits definitely pick up the weapon zero series and study it you will be blown away um it's also a fantastic story in my opinion um but yeah I, t minus like this was the the very first issue t minus four then I got Universe X, uh, the special edition Alex Ross sketchbook that was released in the Wizard magazine. Uh, again, anytime I come across a, a copy of any of his Earth X related um, sketchbooks, I'm always going to buy because they, they're not highly valued and they're just wonderful works of art if you are a fan of comic book art. Um, just to to look at and just appreciate and you get commentary from Alex Ross about the designs and the characters so they are a fun read this is a 100% nostalgia buy again find it's the the 90s comic goodness with this cover the not in not just embossed but the holographic effect on the title treatment and surfer and a little comic box up here you know, uh, a buck for this book is a steal in my opinion it's the conclusion of the the herald ordeal uh little arc 
Um, it's just a, a great story, a great Silver Surfer story. Um, so if you're a Silver Surfer fan, or just like Cosmic Tales, or like a Galactus, Herald Tale, the, this, this arc is one to pick up. Another 90s comic gimmick cover goodness, the Wolverine number 50 with the die cut uh, claw mark cover. This was a, a comic that I checked out from my local library all the time when I was a kid because I just loved it so much. Uh, I, you know, getting it for a buck, uh, this book, I know uh, can like sells for more. And I was like a buck, definitely going to pick that up. Then I just randomly saw this and I think I saw from like about here when I was slipping through the, the dollar bins and it, it struck me very, like very similar to early Joe Quesada art. So I pulled it out and yeah, it is early Joe Quesada DC art. I'm I'm really excited to pull this one out and flip through it and just appreciate the early Joe Casada goodness. Randomly, I've never seen this this cover before. The Aria Angela number one, probably a early '90s, early early 2000s. Um, yeah, 2000 on his signature. So uh, Joe Casada image book. Um, you know. Just a, a cover by, just because I love Joe Casada's artwork. But like I said, I had never seen this cover before, and it's it's fantastic. All right, so this is the the high the high dollar book that I purchased. Uh, the the vendor dealer guy uh, sold it for me for twenty dollars. Um, he had twenty five dollars marked on it originally thirty five. I was trying to do some I did some research when I got home on key collector uh you know he has it listed as a one in 100 variant i guess i couldn't really find anything on it note signified that because key collector doesn't have it listed as a one in 100 variant it's just listed as a just a regular variant cover i don't know it's a it's a joe Quesada cover to a book that i i love um uh, savage wolverine number one has interior artwork by Frank Cho, so it's a doubly goodness book for me. Um, really happy to add this book to my collection for the Joe, Joe Quesada specific cover. So yeah, twenty bucks. Uh, I was it was the first purchase of the day. I was just like, yeah, I want it. What the heck? Um, leave if you guys know in the comments, like leave to confirm or deny. Like, like I said, I don't know if it actually is a 1 in 100 variant, but if it is, awesome. If not, eh, who cares? All right, so the last two books. I was digging through, I think, the Brothers Grin uh, bins when I found this one. It's a trade paperback, uh, Deadly Foes of Spire, Spider Man. I think it is just reprints of, or at least I assume it's just reprints of. Um, classic stories featuring, um, you know, specific villains of, of Spider-Man. But why I bought it was for this early Joe Matarera cover, like wraparound cover. It's an image that in the early 2000s or so, early internet days, I, I saw this, this image a lot. And I didn't, never knew where it was, what it came from or whatever. But I saw it uh, for, I think they had it for two bucks. It was in their $2 bin. Like, what the heck, $2 for this Joe Matera cover and for a trade paperback is a super cheap deal. And lastly, I was walking out and I saw the Dark Knight Returns 10th Anniversary Edition of... The trade paperback collected of the Dark Knight Returns issues. And I was walking by and I thought I saw $40 on this, which probably is not too out of line, I guess. But I double I did a double take and saw $4. Like 
Uh, yeah, I definitely need a, a better copy of this trade paperback. And I don't know the publishing history of the trade paperback. If this is definitely a first printing of the 10th anniversary edition. And I don't know if it's the 10th anniversary edition of an original trade paperback that was published after the original issues came out, or if it's the 10th and it's referring to the 10th anniversary of the original issues. And this is the first trade paperback of those original issues that was published. This came out in 1996. The original series issues came out in 86. So I'm going to rely on the you guys in the comments to educate me on this if this is the very first trade paperback publishing of those original issues or if there was a another one before it um because i would love to to own a first first printing of the trade paperback but beyond that this is again in excellent condition but this is the version that in my early high school days um it would have been like 98 99 or so was this is the copy that my local library public library had and i checked out and read over and over again because we all know uh the iconic status of this story and so in early early days of comic book collecting and reading this is a transformative tale to read for a young comic book reader um so uh again four dollars was a, a no-brainer purchase for me on this one uh, again the nostalgia of it the yeah i don't i don't have this version like i have a, a later printing copy of the trade paperback super happy to add this to to my collection again for the the significance in my own personal life uh for this version uh, so that uh that will do it for all of my pickups from yesterday this is definitely a very long video because of all of my talking um and tangents so i do hope you stayed through to the end and enjoyed just all the the pickups that i i came home with uh what are what are some of your favorite uh books that i i picked up um do you think uh what do you think of my cost basis of literally even though i bought this like this one for four dollars overall it ended up only costing me 95 cents for like this book uh based on the total dollar that i spent um so yeah let me know uh and if you guys have answers to the the few questions that i did pose throughout let me know in the comments i am looking to be educated thanks for watching and again if you enjoyed this type of comic book related content please give the video a thumbs up hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel until next time comment below and let's talk comics bye